Welcome back everybody. It's the Digital Drawing 101 course for drawing animals. My name is Kirk Nelson. This is the start of chapter five where we develop a cat caricature. This is lesson number 12, see and sketch for the cat. And as before, we'll begin our evaluation of the anatomy of this animal by taking a close look at the skeletal structure. Now this clearly is just a house cat. It's not the larger type of predatory large cats like the tiger or the lion. It is the smaller pet sized version of the feline form. And thereby the skeletal structure is much smaller. The bones are more delicate. They're a little bit more compact together, but the cat is much more flexible than either the dog or the horse. And that in part comes from the smaller skeletal structure. The bone structure is a little bit leaner. They're not quite as thick and dense. And that helps to give the cat the light agility and flexibility that we see with the animal. Now, in much the same way a dog's skull is constructed to augment the nostrils because the scent is so important to it, the cat's skull is constructed to augment the sense of sight. So the eye sockets are very prominent on a cat's skull because it is one of its primary strengths when it comes to hunting being a nocturnal animal in its keen eyesight at night, the skull is constructed like that. So there's less bone density up in the front by the jaws and more back along the brow area to house those eye sockets. Otherwise, the spine structure is very similar to the other animals that we took a look at. The bone structure of the legs are slightly different because at the toes there's these retractable claws instead of hooves or even the regular paws like we saw with the dog. So it's almost like they've got an extra little joint in there to push those claws out when they need them. But otherwise, those upper joints of the legs are buried within the torso like we saw with the other animals as well. Like this top femur area is very difficult to see on a cat because it's within this very fluffy and very meaty portion of the animal. It's important to also note that the tail has more mass to it than with the other animals, simply because cats tend to use a tail as a counterbalance, so it has more weight to it. It also helps with its agility. Now, as we look at the cat's head, there's several features that I wanna point out that you're gonna to wanna to make sure you capture well if you want your illustration to be recognizable as a regular cat. First, let's talk about the eyes. Now, the actual eye sockets are very rounded, but the pupils tend to have this vertical oval shape to them. Maybe oval isn't really the right word because a lot of times at the points, they can be very, very sharp. In fact, in very bright light, the pupils become very thin vertical slits. Now in the dark, they can open up and become almost rounded, but cat's eyes are known to have these very distinct shaped pupils. Another very distinctive feature are the whiskers. Now when we drew the dog, we just ended up putting a couple little dots in there to indicate where the whiskers are, because whiskers aren't quite as important to a dog as they are for a cat. Cats use their whiskers to help them navigate through the dark sometimes, and it can help them determine whether or not they can actually fit through a space because they use them to sense the space that's around them. If their whiskers can fit through with hardly any brushing on the gap, they know their body can fit through it too. Cats have a lot of very long, very noticeable whiskers, not only coming from the snout. There's also a couple whiskers coming from the very back area behind the cheekbones and up along the eyebrow area you get a couple of vertical whiskers coming up out there. The nose of a cat is very similar to a dog's nose, but the shape is even more distinctive in that it's almost a heart shape on the very front here with those nostrils cutting out little bites from those diagonal sides of that heart shape. Also notice that there's almost an imaginary line going from this inner connection of the ear down to brush up against the inner part of the eye down to the nostril. So that can really help a lot when it comes to positioning the facial features of a cat. It again creates that triangular shape that's not actually drawn there, but just used as a guide for positioning the features. Now the cat's ears are swivelable, so they can turn around a significant amount, but usually they're drawn facing forwards unless the cat is upset. In that case, they're swiveled around and folded down, and that's what gives the cat a, an angry or possibly a scared look. But most commonly, you'll see them drawn open and slightly out to the sides in a triangular type of form, and there's this little fleshy indent here. That's an important little aspect to it. A lot of times that's rendered as just a little notch in the side of the ear. And then depending on the breed of the cat, there's usually a considerable amount of fur in between the ear and the cheekbone here. 
So you get this big rounded area here that has a lot of tufts of fur in it. And oftentimes that's rendered in a drawing with a considerable amount of fur drawn in and not a smooth line. So now let's use our same sketching process that we used on the other animals to develop a rough sketch of the cat animal. You've seen me do this a number of times now. I don't think you really need additional instruction on how to do this, but I'll just show you the lines that I ended up with for the sketch. I started out with the action line. I'm imagining this being a cat that's sitting down. So I'm thinking this line goes, falls down from his spine along his back and then points down into the tail. The general mass of the animal, I expect the head to be up here, that chest area here, along with the back mass, and that sort of hunched up back leg creates almost a circular mass there where the foot would be sticking out. After sketching in the skeleton, I indicated the triangles for ears along the skull, followed along that same action line, sketched in where I think the joints would probably fall with the elbows up here, going down to the paws, coming straight down, now that back leg is folded up like we mentioned. That's what causes all the flesh and the mass in the back there to sort of bunch up into that round shape with a very flat area sticking straight out along that back foot. I also added the tail as an additional little swoop coming down in front of the animal. And then I completed the sketch with my solids layer as normal. I sketched in where I think the actual mass of the body would be. Now usually when a cat is illustrated, you'll get a nice fluff along the chest area here, where the fur from the neck kind of meets in with the fur from the torso. It gives this nice little augmented chest area that kind of gives a regalness to the character. The skull is basically rounded from this angle, with the eyes, once again, being along that center vertical line of the skull. And you'll notice that the eye still lines up with that imaginary line from the tip of the ear down to the nostrils. And then the mouth is just indicated with a couple of little swoops. Paws I simply indicated with some round spherical looking items and the regular cylinders that we've seen before to indicate the legs. And then the tail is just outlined into a general, very gentle curve coming down in front of the animal. All right, everybody, that's it for lesson 12 on the C and sketch for the feline form. Next lesson, lesson number 13, we talk about exaggeration in lines and how to push the proportions to create a successful caricature.